So hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss a very simple and important topic and that is the pancreatic cystic tumors. So whenever we talk about the tumors of pancreas, the one very much ignored topic is the cystic tumors of the pancreas and this is where actually you get confused. So whenever we talk about the cystic tumors of the pancreas, what are the important things that we need to understand? There are two, three important things that we have to be very careful of. Whether the thing that you are talking about, is it a tumor at all or is it something else? And this is where you have to diligently see whether you are talking about pancreatic pseudocyst or whether you are talking about the cystic tumors of the pancreas. So let us try to understand what are the cystic tumors of the pancreas and then we will go for a consolidated approach. So when we talk about the cystic tumors of pancreas, cystic tumors of the pancreas, what are the cystic tumors? The first is SCN and what is SCN students? It is serous cystic neoplasm, serous cystic neoplasm. Then we have something which is known as MCN. What is MCN students? Mucinous, mucinous cystic neoplasm. And then we have the third one is IPMN, IPMN. And what is that? That is intraductal, intraductal papillary, papillary mucinous neoplasm, mucinous neoplasm. So we need to understand a lot of things in context with them. Apart from that, there is one more cystic tumor which has been added of late and that is solid the word solid here is what a misnomer. So solid pseudopapillary, solid pseudopapillary pancreatic tumor. So solid pseudopapillary tumor and this is also known as Hamadi's tumor, Hamadi's tumor or Gubber friends tumor or Gubber friends tumor. Now try to understand a lot of things about them. That what they are, how they are different from a pseudocyst and how to approach them. We will have a discussion on the approach, consolidated approach. So let us talk about that. So whenever you talk about approach to a pancreatic tumor or basically approach to a pancreatic cyst. So suppose you have a patient with a pancreatic cyst. So this pancreatic cyst, it could be associated with a tumor or it could be a pseudocyst. So how to see that? Now the next, very next thing that you need to understand is you need to check about the history of this patient. Is there any history of pancreatitis? Is there any history of trauma? So if there is history of pancreatitis or trauma, this could be probably a pseudocyst or it could be or it could be IPMN and this is what is very 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 important. So it could be a pseudocyst versus IPMN. Now this is what is very important thing that you need to understand. If there is no history of pancreatitis, no history of pancreatitis. So if the answer is yes, there is a history versus no. So if there is no history of pancreatitis, it could be a simple cyst. It could be simply a serous cystic neoplasm or you can say a cystic tumor. So how to differentiate between them, how to evaluate them, let us see. Now how to confirm whether they are going in this category of pseudocyst or you can say IPMN. The next very important thing that you have to confirm it with what the cyst fluid content. Because if it is pancreatitis associated, you have to understand that the fluid inside will have that pancreatic juice amylase levels. So amylase levels of the cyst is very important. So in this case, you will have elevated fluid and which fluid cyst fluid so elevated cyst fluid amylase levels and this is what is extremely important so if there is elevated cyst fluid amylase level then what you need to do yes you need to confirm whether it is due to malignancy or whether it is due to pseudocyst try to understand a, a malignancy will always have the cea levels to be elevated whereas a pseudocyst will never have it so now the next thing that you need to confirm it, what is the cyst fluid, what is the cyst fluid CEA levels, CEA levels. 
Now, when you talk about cyst fluid CEA levels, what are the next two, three things that you need to understand? Either they could be elevated. So, if they are elevated, that means you are dealing with what? Malignancy. And what is that malignancy, students? It is IPMN. And this is what is very important. Now, if the cyst fluid CEA levels, they are found to be low. So, now try to understand this scenario. The CEA levels are low. The amylase is high. So, what is it, students? It's a pseudosis. And this is how you comfortably differentiate. So, I'm giving you an algorithm. I don't want to make this a very detailed discussion. Just in a nutshell, I want to just summarize this thing. Now, when we talk about the simple cyst versus tumor, before that, you need to check it with what? The cyst fluid. So, here, the cyst fluid CEA levels are later, we'll see. But cyst fluid amylase levels, they are always what students low. And this is what is very, 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 very important. Now, in order to differentiate whether it is a tumor versus it's a simple cyst, you need to check the, again, cyst fluid CEA levels. So, if you talk about cyst fluid CEA levels, what are the important things that you need to understand? If it is elevated, that, that means that it's a malignancy and amongst them, which one is malignancy? Answer is MCN. Mucinous cystic neoplasm shows an adenoma to carcinoma sequence. So this is actually MCN and thus the diagnosis of MCN has been confirmed. Now suppose if the cyst fluid amylase level is also low and cyst fluid CEA level is also low. Now what you need to understand, you need to test for certain conditions. Now it could be a simple cyst, it could be uh, I, it could be a serocystic neoplasm. So now you need to look for the special features. Is there any special feature? So the answer could be no, there is no special feature. So there is no special feature. Neither the levels of CEA nor the levels of amylase are elevated. So this is therefore the diagnosis is simple pancreatic cyst. These are very important things. Now imagine when you're talking about the special features and the next thing is you get to see a classical sunburst appearance. So there is sunburst appearance. Now when you talk about sunburst appearance, what is the classical thing that will come in your mind? That is serous cystic neoplasm. So serous cystic neoplasm has a typical sunburst appearance. Apart from that, do you think there is one more category? Answer is when you talk about the special features, there are certain special tumor markers. So a cyst fluid levels, amylase and life, amylase and CA levels are low. Tumor markers, we this is positive for catenin. So beta catenin, beta catenin positive, beta 2 type of estrogen. Yeah, we have vimentin, we have vimentin as the positive, and this is seen in case of solid pseudopapillary tumor. So solid pseudopapillary tumor. This is what is very, very, very important. And this is how you are going to evaluate the patient of pancreatic cyst versus a pancreatic pseudocyst. So again, in a nutshell, you need to check whether or no the mileage levels are more or elevated or no. If they are, then you need to go for CEA. If CEA is elevated, then it's an IPMN. If it is not, then it's a pseudocyst. If both of them are low, it could be a serocystic neoplasm. It could be a cystic you can say simple pancreatic cyst or it may be in a category of solid pseudopapillary tumor. However, if cyst amylase is low and CEA is elevated, you are dealing with MCN. So a lot more on this later on. We will be discussing a lot more things related with pancreas and other important topics. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do subscribe to my channel. Do like it and do comment in the comment section. With, did you like the topic or no or what other Topics you want me to record for you in a summary or nutshell. Thank you for watching.